Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Daniel Mantilla y seguimos aquí en Seminci, en el Teatro Calderón, donde estamos hablando con talento nacional e internacional, en este caso internacional como Tracy Lehman. Welcome to Valladolid. Uh, muchos, muchas gracias. <risa> Thank you. Ella es la directora de Bob Trevino Likes It, Likes It, una película que compite por la espiga de oro y que viene de haber triunfado en el South by Southwest, SXSW, con los premios a Mejor Película y el Premio del Público. How has been traveling around the world with such a personal film for for you it's interesting because when we were making it i i was so busy and i didn't have time to think of how it would feel when it was out you know uh, but now i've had these beautiful experiences um seeing audiences you know kind of all around the world relate to it and you know they say specificity is universal and I'm, i really am experiencing that and it it it's just so beautiful in each new place to see that we are not so different mm -hmm. that the same th same things affect us everywhere you know this film is inspired by your life what we should p tell people that haven't seen the film so far um i think just a little bit yeah just a little don't give it away and we won't give it away uh i think it's it's you know it's a movie uh, that that deals with a sense of belonging and with the meaning of family and and maybe unexpected meanings of family you know not everybody is gifted with the perfect family or or um you know that a feeling of belonging at home and but we all do belong and we and we all have a family even if they're not our birth family mm -hmm. so it's uh anybody that has ever felt that they didn't belong or anybody ever ever felt that uh they love someone who wasn't maybe that with their birth family or i think it's for everybody really mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think most of the times we see the um, topic of chosen family mm -hmm. through queer stories, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. But not so much uh, from a um, fa father and daughter point of view. Yeah. Uh, how was dealing with that? Um, I think, you know, I also uh, agree with the statement and I, I think um, it's not limited in that way. Like, like it's very important in the queer community, but mm -hmm. it's it's really everybody experiences this. Everybody experiences some time where where they feel that they weren't seen or understood or heard or or that uh they that no someone didn't hold space for where they were in their life and so um i'm seeing it with uh you know uh, people who were adopted um people maybe other people who maybe didn't have this exact situation but they they have friends who have so now they empathize with their friends who've gone through these kind of things more um but it's it's affecting a lot of people of all ages and from all backgrounds, but I'm noticing that a lot of men are really affected and that's really beautiful for me because mm -hmm. I wanted to invite men in to have an emotional experience and uh, I think men also need to have feelings, you know? Some, sometimes people grew up in a way where they, they didn't get to have those feelings and I think it's been really beautiful to see it's an outlet for, um, and you think, oh, this this man has, he belongs, he's he's in this, this demographic, he belongs. It's like, no, he needs to feel these things too, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's political in a way to do a film about nice people? Because we're living now in dark times, in yeah. clinical times, yeah. and it's easy to go to the other side. And suddenly it's nice to watch something that reminds us that we are good. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's it's kind of a non-controversial film that's working under the surface to bring us together. You know, um, I, I think people kind of have their guard down when it sneaks up a little bit on, on the fact that we're not all so different. Um, And I think, you know, throughout the history of, of entertainment and cinema, we're often looking for the opposite of what the world is because we, you know, if things are really great, then we'll go to these dark, depressing movies, you know, but if things are rough and we need reminder of hope and light, then we'll go to these kind of movies. So um, like like how movies flourished in the depression in the United States and things like that. But um, I do think we need some hope and not like toxic positivity. You know, the movie does yep. talk about trauma and real things it's not it's not ignorant of darkness and, and and disconnection but it is choosing light and choosing a step towards healing it's the same with social media because now we are trying to be cautious about it and we this is a film uh, where something good comes out of facebook <laughs> for the first time maybe in 10 years yeah yeah absolutely um i you know I, i would it would feel irresponsible to me to put that out there if it didn't really happen but i know that it's possible because it did happen to me so and i know in the beginning of social media for me 
um, that, you know, I was a wheelchair user in high school. I had an accident and I was home alone from school and I had this brace like this and, mm -hmm. I, and I had, I couldn't be with my friends, but the internet gave me a community and it gave me people to talk to and I didn't feel alone. It was so beautiful and things, you know, got kind of strange after that and dark and, and now it's come back to that for me. It's come back to like this stranger on the internet was kind to me for nine years. The real situation was nine years, oh, not cool. three months. Yeah. Um, and so because I know it can't happen, I, I feel an obligation to share that because we think, oh, we could live in this world. I'm like, no, no, we do live in this world when we choose to be this way, you know. Is, is the, this film like your own version of a, spra a scrapbook yeah. of your relationship? <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, they kind of say, I mean, this is a little uh, rough, this saying, but, you know, um, one person's trash is another person's treasure, you know, and that's really depicted in the, in the movie. I won't say everything, but mm -hmm. it's really depicted in the movie. And to me, that's, that's a feeling of, uh, you may not belong here, but you belong. You may not feel that you belong here because mm -hmm. someone made you feel that you don't belong, but you 100% belong. Mm -hmm. And and maybe there's people right around the corner that want to love you, you know, and, and it's kind of a movie about making, you know, learning to let go of the people that continually hurt you to make room for the people that want to love you. And I think we we sometimes are blind to these beautiful moments because we're so fixated on the things we're not getting. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that the scrapbook is a perfect metaphor for that. Did you set any red line, any limit about how much of your experience or your, pers your per person uh, wanted to be on, on the page? Um, you know, it is fiction, but it's inspired by these, it's inspired by this real Facebook friend who had the same name as my dad that I accidentally friended <laughs> looking for my dad and the, his kindness. And I had to build, I, 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 it was very important to me to have the emotional truths, you know, like the things that m I experienced, the trauma and the healing and those moments, but I had to build different cinematic sequences around that because you know real life is not always cinematic <laughs> so uh yeah it's just been really really healing and i tried to i combine sometimes i'm like oh i remember this friend this good friend that went through this thing and this would be great to put here and it, it's true because it happened to my friend so some some of it is me some of it is stories i've heard they just in different inspirations, but I tried to stay true. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other day I was talking to Andrew Garfield about We Live in Time, <laughs> uh, which is a film about grief and yeah. loss. And he was, because he experienced grief and loss uh, with her, his mother, I was asking him about um, how art can help someone to, to deal with trauma, with your yeah. own life. And he didn't like the word therap uh, therapeutical, mm -hmm. but uh, he liked healing. Yeah. What's the experience for you? That's interesting because I guess the difference would be because sometimes therapy to me implies someone knows better than you and they're telling you how to do it sometimes, you know, but healing comes in many forms and it's different for everybody. <clears throat> and so it's not that I would have signed up. I would have known that I needed to sign up to have a Facebook dad for nine years and that would have helped me heal, you know, but that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So a therapy wouldn't, a therapist wouldn't have prescribed that. But um, I, I think we, the other thing is this movie, you know, it, it could have leaned more melodramatic or saccharine, but I think because it focuses, it's, it, it's aware of the darkness and the pain, but it, it focuses on the beginning of their healing, the connection and the healing. I think um, that's, that's I mean, we're all a little bit broken and we all need each other. And why did you decide to, to set the story in three months and not nine years, for example? Because, um, I knew that that Facebook Bob had changed my life in a few months. He actually had probably done it in a few weeks. That's mm -hmm. how shocking and how, how much I needed it. Mm -hmm. So I felt that it was more responsible. It was also better for production. It was easier, <laughs> <laughs> but it was also- It's an independent movie yeah, after yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was more responsible to, to say this can happen in a day, in a week, in two months, three months. It doesn't take nine years to change someone's life. You can pass someone uh, in the elevator and smile at them and be kind to them and change their whole day. You know, maybe they were going through something horrible. It, so um, I, I just felt that it, it, it yeah, it, people, we, we, can, we can do this for each other. You know? And how was designing writing the first uh, scene in the film? Because we were talking about before the interview. It's, it's quite extreme. It's like it's really funny. Yeah. But it uh, puts the character like in a very particular place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was interesting because in the script that was scene three, 
But as soon as we had that close up of Barbie, uh, the cinematographer John Rosario and I, we looked at each other and said, "Oh, this is this is the opening shot." You know, it set the tone. You know, because it, the tone of the movie is humor and pathos. You know, and they, they kind of go together. And I wanted to say. Yes, we're going to show pain, but it's going to be funny. It's okay, you know, and we're not laughing at her. We're laughing with her mm -hmm. because we have been that person on the other side of those texts. You know? All of us have been like really cool in any, pom any moment of our lives. Yeah, yeah. That's why I love, for example, girls. Mm -hmm. Some people hated it, but it's like, we all are mean, we all make yeah. crazy stuff. It's like, yeah. that's real people we in a way. We all have capacity to be yeah. them, you know. Anything, I feel like anything we judge, you know, they say if you point your finger, you have three pointing back at you, like this. <laughs> and I'm like, if you're judging something, take a look at yourself, maybe, you know, you might have something to look at. I love friends, but mm -hmm. real life is not that thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's always messier. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's very messy. <laughs> 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 and how was navigating the tone of the film? Because it can de get quite extreme. It's like the, there are situations uh, that you could like m lose the control of, of the picture. Yeah, absolutely. I think because I was kind of staying true to the way I see the world, mm -hmm. I could, I kept, it was able, to, I was able to be consistent because it's consistent with the way that I see the world. Um, I think that life is absurd. You know, life is absolutely absurd, and people people are lovable, but they're also irrational. And we do these strange things to get what we want, and um, I don't judge that. I think that that's, that's part of life, and it's funny, and it's sad, and it's all mixed up, um, and they kind of go together. Mm -hmm. you know? And what about the casting? Because I think one of the keys of the film uh, are the performances, uh, separate and together. How was... Uh, seeing for the first time uh, Barbie Ferreira and John Leguizamo together. Oh my gosh, so the first time I saw them together was our rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And I had, I, you know, I had really, really studied before I met with them. I'd looked at their all their other work, of course. I was big fans of both of them. And I knew in my heart that it was going to work, but I had no proof. It was just, you know, because um, you put two people together and, you know, just... Um, but we, we had a, a slot scheduled for rehearsal. We sat down and I've been training to work with actors for a long time. So I was very prepared and within five minutes it was just magic it, it, within the first line it was magic and it was they, they were even in shock of how great it was because um it was so easy it was like they'd known each other their the whole time and and sometimes you just get lucky like that but they're incredible and in that they brought it to the table you know and why didn't you ask a screen test before because it, it no. was it, it, it wasn't impossible no no budget no budget oh. to do that <laughs> one thing I, I insisted on was um you know ba uh, john leguizamo and barbie ferreira were scheduled to shoot first but knowing that i had been through similar situations i said i think just like the joy and the sorrow i said i think she needs to experience the bad dad french stewart before she will know how much the good dad means mm -hmm. because i know this personally you know so i never would have appreciated facebook bob if i hadn't had this trauma with my dad you know mm -hmm. so so even though french was shooting after i said we have to budget and fly him in and we have to rehearse first so so french came in and french and barbie from just like john and barbie just the minute they sat down just magic beautiful mm -hmm. and we improved all the up moments of mm -hmm. their you know because they, they had somewhere to fall you know so she she's not she has to know that it can be good or she's just not smart you know so and he's charming french stewart is a very charming guy so um so we did that and then he left and then john came and yeah mm -hmm. and they're amazing i i'm very lucky <laughs> we already knew that john uh, is amazing but yeah. we didn't know that about barbie yeah what did you see in her like she can play this character the, um so on euphoria i watched her on euphoria um i'm much more feminine gaze than male gaze you know euphoria is to me very male gazey mm -hmm. but um i was looking at her with my own feminine gaze and seeing her vulnerability and her nuance and her performance and, and i wanted to stay on her i wanted the shots to stay on her i wanted the scenes to be focused on her sometimes i was feeling things because of her and then it would go to somebody else and i was like wait what's her story tell me more about her so I'd seen this and then the vulnerability there. And then I looked at uh, a movie called Unpregnant. Yep. And she was so funny and she had this positivity. But it, again, it was aware. It wasn't just toxic positivity. It was uh, an awe, like a childlike awe of the beautiful things in life. And I said, this is Lily. Put these together and this mm -hmm. is Lily. There's, I was like, there's really no one else. Uh, how challenging was finding the money and the way to, to make this film? <laughs> 
<laughs> it was very challenging. Um, I've a, I, I noticed I have a gray hair now <laughs> under here. I was like, that's my Bob Chirino hair. <laughs> but uh, it was very stressful because in order to make the movie that the way that I wanted to make it, mm -hmm. we had to form a company, and and we you know other people wanted to do it for more money. But then I they would be telling me what to do, and I actually had final cut on the movie, which mm -hmm. is very rare for a first time feature director but we we Sean Mullen my producing partner and Edgar Rosa uh, our other capital P producer um, really had my back and they they cared about the same things as me so mm -hmm. we raised equity we got loans <laughs> we got a, a small MG from Myriad Pictures and uh, we still owe some money so please go see this movie <laughs> please <laughs> how do you see the state of American cinema in the independent side right now um, it's interesting because a lot of people are a lot of people who've done a lot of big movies. They seem to be depressed, mm -hmm. but for me, I, I'm inspired because when things are are down, that's when artists get to work. That's when it's time for us to do what we do. And um, I also think that as there's bigger movies and there's artificial intelligence, we're human and we're going to need real stories and authentic stories. And so. You know, uh, music, live music, live theater, independent film. These are these are things that our souls need. So I'm excited. I, I feel like, again, I know the darkness, but I'm choosing the light here. <laughs> I think that uh, AI couldn't write uh, Bob Torino likes it, for example. It couldn't what? It, uh, write. Oh uh, no 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 film. no! It's because it's it's never going to come yeah. out from a machine. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I I. Yeah, I don't know how it would. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good for the machine that it didn't have to go through that. <laughs> Once you make the film and you let go of it in uh, South by Southwest, mm -hmm. how was that feeling? And then you won both prizes, the Grand Jury Prize and the Audience Prize. How was that week? It was amazing because people had never, you know, Claudette, uh, the head of South by Southwest, she told me when we got in, she said she loved the movie and she said, I have no idea we were going to win, you know, but she said, prepare, are you ready? You know, prepare yourself because people are going to tell you their stories. Yeah. This is going to affect people. People are going to, and I remember thinking, oh, Claudette, I, I've done this before with my shorts, you know, not, not in an egotistical way, mm -hmm. but like, I'm good. I, I got this. I've been there. Yeah. 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 And then, and then it started happening and I was like, oh, wow, this is different. This is, um, and so people were coming up to me with wet eyes saying uh, how much they could relate and, and telling me their stories. And it was the first time as an artist and storyteller that I felt so connected to the audience. Um, I felt that, uh, you know, by facing my fears and being so vulnerable, um, I realized that other people need this story too. And that's a really, really beautiful thing. You have, you must have, uh listen a lot of stories crazy stories yeah i'm too many he's like okay i'm fine i'm, yeah. I, I'm good with my with my shit yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well I, I learned healing is not uh is never over yeah it continues and continues and it's not linear you know it's it's up and down and da, 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 da. but you're as long as you're kind of going this way yeah. you're okay so but you're uh, moving on in a way yeah yeah. I, yeah it's like i have this child and i've been taking care of the child and now the child's okay mm -hmm. the child is going and they have a life of their own and that's I have a little empty nest syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, because I cared for that child for so long. But now I'm like, maybe I'll have another baby. <laughs> <laughs> and what about that that other baby? Because this is a very personal story. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you thinking for your second film? Like an original story or maybe yeah. something of your own life? Because I, I know, you know, Carla Simon, Spanish mm -hmm. filmmaker. Yeah. She has done like three films that are based on her stories. And now mm -hmm. she's doing a fourth film. It's, it's more... Frame. Yeah, no, no, to, that that she didn't write the fourth one. No, or? yes, but yeah, it's like it's an different. original story. It's I got not it, got it. influenced by her family or got her it. legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think they say write what you know. Um, so I'm I've been doing that, and the next one is is uh, the next one that I wrote. I fin just finished a draft, and I had a reading before I came here, mm -hmm. and I, and I felt after the reading I need to make this one. You know, and it's okay. similar. It's a it's inspired by a true story in my life, also with my dad, but not a sequel. <laughs> so I'll, everybody's going to have uh, he, father, fatherly healing in my my, my films. Um, but I'm also excited about other stories. You know, there's uh, a couple of things I've read that that, that 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 deal with the themes of things that are very important to me. Chosen family, challenging perceptions is really important to me. Uh, a sense of belonging. So anything with that that has heart, that I feel like the way I look at the world can add value to that story. Do you see yourself doing another person's screenplay? 
Um, a bit, another one? Uh, doing another person screenplay, like um, yeah, not necessarily writing your I TV could, show or your film. I could. After South by Southwest, I read a lot of scripts, and there's one that mm -hmm. I felt very connected to. So I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to try for it. But, uh, um, but you always have more control over your own stories. So, um, but I'm open to it because mm -hmm. I, I'm learning that maybe the way that I look at the world, it, 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 it can help. You know, and maybe it can help other people's stories too. Mm -hmm. And how is that moment? Because, in a way, you don't exist before South by Southwest, yeah. only for a few people. Yeah. And then the industry knows that you are a person with talent. Yeah. That can do things and tell stories. Yeah. How is that moment? It's really strange because in my life, there's always going to be before South by Southwest and after South by Southwest. Even though I've been at this for a while, I've made mm -hmm. shorts, music videos, all these things. And and when I got back home. And there were all these meetings and things. It was like, wait, I'm the same person I was two weeks ago, you know. Um, but it's, not, I'm not upset about it. I know that's mm -hmm. the way that it works, and I'm glad that I was training. You know, I was like going to the metaphorical gym, training this whole time, and so now I'm ready for whatever happens. And if if it had happened earlier, maybe I wouldn't have been ready. You know. Mm -hmm. And this second film, do you know when you're going to film it? I, I haven't even sent it out yet. Oh, I just okay. I sent it to friends and uh, I said it a small reading, friends and family, and my agents and managers want to read it. And I was like, I'll send it to you soon. I'll send it to you soon. So, <laughs> um, but I'm in love with it, and I def I I would say if I had to guess, like maybe I'll hopefully be able to make it in like a year. Oh, but. cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy <laughs> Valladolid, Madrid, uh, wherever you go. Thank you so much. And all the, all the, the whole set of festivals you are going to visit with this film, because Thank I think you. it's going to have a long life. Thank you. It's going to open next year? Yeah, so um, it seems like maybe March or the spring. Um, so uh, we have distributors um, kind of a lot of places, and a, a Contra Corriente is putting out In Spain, Spain, yes, a Contra Corriente. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> Muchas gracias. And uh, in the States? Yeah. Uh, in the States, we have roadside attractions. So oh, it'll cool. Be, yeah, it'll be US and Canada, mm -hmm. um, or they're, they're doing North America. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. So they, they, they're thinking March. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. Good luck with the festival. Thank you so much. Ya sabéis que podéis ver estos días Bob Trevino Like Sit aquí en Valladolid y en unos meses en los cines en el resto de España. Seguimos con más entrevistas en kinótico.es, la primera con K, la segunda con C. Gracias.